Hi there and welcome to Triplicate, home of interesting electronics and today we're going to have a second look at the Casio DH100 Windhorn with the Squawk which upsets the dog as well uh, today also featuring the brand new camera stand very high tech Hopefully we get more shots of what I'm doing and fewer shots of the backs of my hand and the backs of my head. So last time we decided what we needed to move forward with this job was a circuit diagram. And a little searching on the internet came up trumps with not just a circuit diagram but also a service manual which not only gives you a circuit diagram it tells you how the thing works so I think it's worth spending a few minutes looking through it and just familiarizing ourselves with how it works okay so it's been a lot of years since I actually heard this this thing going and I sort of had it in my head that it uh, it produced very authentic sounding instrument sounds. Um, so I thought it was sample based. And at the end of the last video, I was wondering why and how they managed to produce a sample based instrument using a, an 8-bit micro. Well, it turns out I was completely wrong. It is, in fact, uh, an analog synthesizer with a voltage controlled amplifier and a voltage controlled filter. Okay, so here we have the block diagram. And as you can see, the CPU is generating essentially square waves um, by using a timer off the crystal, so it's going to stay in tune. Uh, this come out of PC7 and PC6. And it also implements a DAC uh, rather crudely using a bunch of resistors to drive the VCA and the VCF. Okay, so we have the square waves go into a VCA and are mixed according to the tone required, uh, which then go into a VCF and hence to the power amplifier. This is a similar system used by the Novation base station, which I did a lot of work on many, many years ago. Uh, that was a, a good deal more sophisticated. Okay, so I think we'll look at the VCA and the VCF in turn, just so we not know what's going on there before we start digging into the actual machine. Okay, so this is the VCA circuit. It looks more complicated than it is because there are some switchable gain controllers um, used for the, vari for the various tones and there's also a switchable low pass filter too in fact. We'll look at the basic circuit here. So the DAC is, a ba is just a, a resistor ladder which produces uh, a variable voltage depending on which of these port outputs are turned on and that is just that transistor is just a, a impedance matcher, just a drive circuit. So that then goes through this resistor, this resistor, and through what they've called the inverter amp. Okay, and the inverter amp is just switched by the output from the CPU, the square wave output from the CPU, basically giving a square wave at the output the size of the voltage coming out of the DAC. So the voltage control filter is actually very simple and the service manual explains it quite nicely. Uh, it's just four RC filters, low pass filters in series um, like this one. Okay, to vary the frequency, the resistor becomes a variable resistor as it shows in uh, two. And the variable resistor is actually implemented using an FET, uh, as in diagram three, 
and the control voltage comes from the DAC. Simple. So if we scroll down, it'll show us the circuit of the whole thing. Okay, <clears throat> they've shown the FETs as simple variable resistors for simplicity. And as we see, there's one, two, three, four stages of filtering. And there's also, they're shown in the resonance circuit, which feeds back the output to the input, which gives a resonant effect like a analog filter, synthesizer filter normally has. You can see it there. And that's switchable in and out depending on the tone. And here's the circuit diagram, which is the bit we wanted in the first place, which, as you can see, is actually upside down relative to the rest of the document. And scanned at none too high a resolution. So, if we zoom in, we can see... <laughs> The legend is not particularly readable. However, I'm sure it's good enough for our purposes. OK, so let's look and see if we can find at what point in the circuit the squeal appears. So, uh, firstly we'll check the signal coming from the micro. The basic oscillator signal. This should be a square wave. Now there's two of these. One should appear on R65 and the other should appear on C34. So, R65 is there. Sure, we're looking at the scope, not the weather forecast. Nothing on our 65. And what did I say? C34, which is. that one. healthy square wave there now so let us look for the signal on the output of the VCA this is at around R15 which is on the other side of the board We'll push the camera back. There we go. So, R15, and then there's a big blob, which is this test point. So we look on there, and we get nothing. Okay. So that appears to be a sensible signal there. So now we look at the VCF, the filter. So we look at IC2 pin 1 is the output of the filter. Right. I see two pin one. No, I see two is just on the same side. Foolish. And I see two pin one is that one. Rail to rail 
rubbish. Okay, so now my suspicion would be that we have a filter that's making a nasty noise. The filter is somehow oscillating. So, let us, well let us check first that the the drive, the drive to the the voltage drive to the filter is not doing anything it shouldn't. So we're looking at R2 and R3. Which are R2 and R3 there. Edge of the board there. Okay, well there doesn't seem to be anything nasty happening there. Should we go down each stage of the filter and look at the, the waveforms there? So that's C1, C2, C3 and C4. Where are they? Let's see one. side of C1 should be essentially a mid-rail bias I guess so this thing's working off 0 and 5 volts so what is supposed to be keeping that steady That's C39. Okay, this along here should be mid rail, and the output should swing either side of that. So that should be at a steady voltage 2.5 volts. Okay, yeah, so VAD is the 5 volt analog. And R4 and R5 form a potential divider. So we get 2.5 volts 
and C39 should smooth that. However, we are seeing a load of oscillation on there, so it looks as though C39 is not doing its job. Uh -huh, so C39 is here on the top. trying to find the so that should be at two and a half or so volts however nah. when I actually play across C39 is a load of oscillation now C39 is Excuse my head getting in the way. 33 microfarad. Hmm. So do we suggest that C39 is faulty? And to find out the answer, we'll have to wait till the next and hopefully final installment of the DH100 digital horn repair. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like the channel. Comment if you've got anything to say about the video. And I'll see you next time.